How's it going guys? She's the Cats here on behalf of Tressa's Collectibles, here to bring you hopefully the first of many box opening videos that we'll be doing on the Tressa's Collectibles channel. Today we're going to be looking at Kaguya-sama Love is War, and uh, since this is the first video of its kind on this channel, I figure might as well just do a quick run through of what you can expect out of this video. So of course, we're going to be opening a couple boxes, get that box opening hype that I'm sure a lot of you love to watch. But we're also going to be trying to make this experience educational for you guys. Give you an example of what you can expect to pull out of these boxes, as well as show you some of the cards that you can look forward to opening in these boxes, as well as putting in your decks, both high rarity cards and low rarity cards. So we'll be taking a look at a lot of stuff throughout the video. And yeah, without further ado, let's get cracking. So, in a single box of Kaguya-sama Love is War, you can expect to get five double R's and one or two foils. As far as the box toppers go, there are four possible box toppers that you can get out of these boxes. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our first one is. So we have the K level zero. So I don't know if you can see it there on the screen, but uh, this is a pretty good utility card. On play, you can pay one and discard a card to look at up to three cards from the top of your deck. Choose any card from among them and add it to your hand. So this is a great card for not only paying out stock and filtering out unneeded cards, but out of the top three, you get to choose any card from among them, no matter what type of card, to add to your hand. So this card can be used to grab events as well as climaxes if you need to. So let's get on to the pack openings. So you get 20 packs in a single box. Let's hope, hope that we can pull some good stuff here. So. Uh, in every pack, we are getting, I believe, four commons, two uncommons, and then one rare or double R slot. So uh, in our first pack, we have the 3-2 uh, Climax combo for uh, Shirogane. And as far as the lower rarity cards, got some pretty nice cards here. This Ishigami, I know is a card that some of my friends are quite keen on. Uh, when this is placed on stage from hand, you reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's a Shuchin character or event card, add it to your hand, discard a card, otherwise put it back. And then also when he gets reversed, you can kick a card out of your opponent's clock and make them replace it with the top card of their deck. So this can be useful for not only taking color out of your opponent's clock if they're running a deck that relies on multiple colors, but you can also use it when your opponent is near a low amount of deck to potentially make it so that they can't get a climax back in with the refresh. As I'm sure some of you guys are familiar, uh, ending your turn with one card left in deck on a turn that you use to climax is a very common tactic and allows you to get the climax back in. So going on to pack number two, we did hit our first double R and we do have one of the chase double Rs of this set. This is the 00K runner and clean cut. Very, very powerful level zero profile. Uh, at the start of your opponent's attack phase, you can mill the top card of your deck, and if it's a Shuchin character or the 3-1 Love is War event, you can move her to an empty slot in the front row. And she also has a clean cut effect, which is where when she reverses a battle opponent, you can choose one of your other characters with Shuchin trait, rest it, and move it to an empty back row slot. So this allows you to play aggressively in the early game. For example, let's say you play three characters that you want to attack with. You attack with one of them here. And then you have your K reverse one of the opponent's characters. You get to move your character back into the back row slot in order to reuse it again for the next turn. So very powerful card. The fact that it not only has its own survival ability, allowing it to move and avoid getting reversed, also means that it can actually move out of the way to prevent the opponent from reversing their character on their turn when they're attacking so that you can move this back and then reverse the character and use her other effect. Very, very strong card. This is definitely a card that you're going to want to look out for when you're opening these, okay, when you're opening these uh, Kaguya cards. So uh, as for the other cards in this pack, we did also get a level zero Kaguya with a Ditch Climax Salvage effect. Very good card that you'll want to look out for as well. So moving on to the next pack. Okay, so moving on to pack number three, we do have our one of our maybe two foils. We have the 3-2-K early play. This is also a very good card. Uh, when you have two or less climaxes in your waiting room, you can early play this at level two. And on play, you can discard a card from your hand in order to heal to stock. So this is definitely a card that you're gonna wanna make use of during your level two game. Let's go ahead and take a look at that foil. You guys can get a good look at that.
believe this card is the yeah, this is the uh, on play. You can mill two cards, and then if you mill a climax among them, you can discard a card and salvage a character. And the secondary effect on play, when this is uh, placed on stage from hand, uh, you can pay one to salvage Romantic Battle of the Brains, which is actually an event from the trial deck. So, very interesting card there. It's a card that you might want to use for free mill in Kogia, as the sometimes have a bit of problem milling, especially in the early game when you want to get some targets into your waiting room for the level 1 combo, which we might pull later. So moving on to pack number 4. So we do have the 1-1 one, one Kaguya. So this is a very interesting level assist card. It's also one of the cards in the resonance package that you can make use of in Kaguya, which we might get to later, assuming we pull a specific Level, level 0. And we also have a 1-1. One, one. This is a very good lower rarity card that you can run, this I. Uh, she cannot be reversed by cost 0 cards, which means that um, unless your opponent plays something that is costed, they'll be unable to kill her. This is a really good card actually to bring out with standby climaxes, because your opponent is never going to be able to field something that's costed at level 0 unless they're running standby themselves. And so this is a very good card to bring out in the early game to uh, prevent your opponent from getting direct attacks, minimize your damage, as well as uh, always guarantee that you keep a card on board. So moving on to the next pack, we have a 0-0 Kaguya. This is a card that you can make use of in the Eye Resonance package, which is uh, not the most meta build, but definitely a fun one nonetheless. Uh, she has a resonance with a 1-0 blue event that allows you to either search or salvage a level 1 I climax combo, which is integral to running that deck. And then uh, looking at some other cards, we also have one of my personal favorite level 0s. This is a very, very strong uncommon. Uh, on play, you can look at the top two cards of your deck and rearrange them. As well as on play, you can pay one, discard a climax, and salvage a climax from your waiting room. So this allows you to uh, if you have the incorrect climax in your hand, grab the correct one. And it's very useful in certain builds of Kaguya that run unconventional climax splits. For example, uh, there are some players that like to run the meta list of Kaguya with more than four standbys instead of going to six standby climaxes and only two gates. So this is a card that definitely can help a lot with that in order to get the climax you need since you aren't running a full four copies of them. Moving on to the next pack, we do have a 3-2 Kaguya. She has a restand ability with a book climax. This isn't one of the most used cards, but uh, I have seen use of this card as a on play top X and not using the climax combo, since it does have that helpful ability to look through the top cards of your deck, try to get specific cards, and it is also 11k power. So, okay. Here we have another very strong uncommon. This is definitely a card you're going to want to look for if you're trying to play a budget build. Um, this Ishigami, when it attacks, you can give one of your other Shuchin characters plus 2,000 power. And at the start of the opponent's attack phase, you can pay one stock to move him to an empty slot in the back row. This is actually an extremely strong card when comboed with the level 0k that we already pulled. because. Uh, with her ability, she wants to reverse the opposing character in order to move a card to the back row, but her power is only 2k, so not exactly the highest card. However, if you're using the level 0 Ishigami in combination with her, you can attack with him, buff her 2,000 power, and now she has a very strong 4,000, which you can use to reverse the opponent's character and use her ability to move something to your back row. So this is a very strong early game setup. Uh, in a, an example setup, you're typically looking at some sort of back row character, something that you want to move to the back row. We'll just have this here as an example. And what you do is you attack with this, attack with the Ishigami buff, attack, move this to the back row, and then you have the option to also move the Ishigami to the back row using his own effect. And then now this K has the entire front row of space in order to use her mill runner ability and try to escape the opponent's reverse. Very, very strong early game package. So, moving on to the next pack. Okay, we do have our next double R, the 1-0 Chica. So she has a climax combo with the choice climax. 
Um, when you play the Climax, if you have... Or I believe you need another Shuqin character. Yeah. Uh, when you play the Climax, if you have another character, you choose one of two abilities to give her until the end of the turn. So she can either gain on reverse salvage, or you can choose one of your opponent's cost zero characters in the front row, bounce it, and then she gains 1,000 power. So a lot of the time with these level one combos, uh, on your first turn at level one, you're gonna wanna look to get that advantage combo. You're gonna wanna pick the on reverse salvage and then uh, keep recurring cards so that you don't run out in the mid game. Although uh, sometimes when you hit the mid to late game or Sometimes even in the early game when you hit level one, your opponent will have something that you will want to send to waiting room with the climax combo. Uh, something something that will be high impact that uh, can affect the game later on, but a lot of the time you're gonna wanna use that salvage part of the combo. And as far as the other cards in the pack, we do have this level zero Kaguya Brainstorm. This is a pretty good brainstorm in the lower rarities if you're looking for something of a budget option. On play from hand, you can look at the top card of your deck and either keep it on top or send it to the waiting room. And she also has a brainstorm, pay one, rest her, brainstorm four, and then for each climax among them, you can look at up to three cards from the top of your deck, choose one card from among them and add it to hand and send the rest to waiting room. So this card has a lot of really good points to it. Uh, the brainstorm ability, when you look at the top three cards and add one of them to your hand, it does allow you to pick any kind of card from among them. So you can take events, you can take climaxes, you can take whatever you want. And you also do not have to show the card to your opponent. So your opponent might be left in the dark about what your plans are. Additionally, because of the on play effect, uh, allowing you to either keep the card on top of your deck or send it to waiting room, you can mill the top card of your deck and turn this card into an artificial five card brainstorm. Because you, uh, you look at the top card, you see it's not a climax, you get rid of it, and then you brainstorm afterwards. Very, very good card. Also allows you to very quickly mill through your deck if you are out of out a lot of climaxes. Uh, moving on to the next, we have the 3 1 event, Love is War. This is a very interesting card. Uh, so you need a Kaguya or a Shirogane to play it, and you draw a card and choose three of your characters, and they gain two effects until the end of the opponent's next turn. The character across from your chosen characters cannot side attack and uh, the card's soul does not decrease when they side attack. So it's a very, very interesting card. It has some fairly niche applications. It's not the most popular card, but uh, definitely a very interesting and flavorful card nonetheless. It uh, allows you to interact with your opponent's cards in very interesting ways while also preventing your opponent from interacting as well by preventing them from uh, side attacking. On to the next pack. So, so far we've pulled two double R's. We've got three left to go. And there are a couple that we really would like to hit out of the remaining three. So, and there's one of them. This is a really, really good box. So we have this 00 Chica uh, on play from hand. Uh, she has two effects. So uh, you can reveal the top card of your deck. And if it's a Shu Chain character, you can give any character 2K power until the end of turn. She can even buff herself. So uh, very useful for allowing your cards to kill your opponent's cards, as well as allowing cards that need extra power to reverse in order to get that extra power that they need. For example, the level one Chica combo, which does need to reverse for the Climax combo. Uh, the effect that makes this card really, really strong and really, really essential if you want to play a very optimized Kaguya deck is the second effect, where when she's placed on stage from hand, you can pay one stock and put the top card of your deck into clock in order to search your deck for any level one or lower character, show it to your opponent and add it to hand. So this is a very good card uh, for the early game since um, you, are using, you are using only one stock to get a card and uh, the clock yourself in the early game is typically not very much of a cost. You typically uh, wanna treat your clock and your life total as a resource. And this is a very powerful profile that allows you to do that. Uh, use your life to gain advantage, and you can use that to snowball the advantage into the mid game. Very, very strong profile. This is definitely a card that you're gonna wanna look out for your Kaguya deck. So uh, we have that. Now we have two double R's left to pull in this box. And possibly one more foil. So hopefully we can get something good. We have the 2-2 Ishigami. This is a uh, standby target. Um, you typically want to be bringing this out at level one. 
um, which is obviously the standby climax allows you to take advantage of your costed cards because it allows you to put them onto the stage for free and use them to their full potential and not have to pay the stock. It's a very powerful card there. Uh, this is a lower rarity card that I think is not really seeing enough play. I think it's quite underappreciated. So uh, this 2-1 Kaguya has experience 5, gains 3k, but more importantly her second effect. At the start of the opponent's climax phase, you can pay one stock and discard one card. Choose one of your opponent's characters on stage and move it to an empty slot. So if you're able to maintain control of the front row and your opponent has to crash into your board, you can potentially use this card, take their valuable back row units, pull them to the front row, and then defeat those as well. So then your opponent is losing valuable utility characters that otherwise wouldn't be able to be interacted with. So for our next rare, we have the 1-0... Um, Yuki, 1-0 uh, Shirogane. So I believe this is a card that interacts with the level swap package. So yes, so when this, uh, when you put a card into your level zone, there's a, there's a specific card that allows you to do that in green. Uh, you can pay one and look at up to four cards from the top of your deck, choose a character from among them, add it to your hand and send the rest to waiting room. This is a pretty interesting package and uh, it doesn't see a whole lot of play but uh, a very fun one nonetheless. It has uh, similarities to another set in Y Shores called Milky Holmes, which uh, unfortunately not totally available in uh, English. It has the uh, demo deck though, that revolves around the level swap mechanic and putting cards into level, taking cards out of level, and has a lot of effects that trigger when cards get put into the level zone. So this is a card that goes with that package. Moving on to the next, we have the 3-2 Chica Rare. This is a card that definitely does not see a lot of play. Um, it doesn't have very great effects. Um, it has It's an 11k power, so that's a nice effect, but the minus one soul, instead of an on-play ability, you'd probably much rather have some sort of on-play ability like a heal or something that allows you to draw extra cards or dig through the deck to find specific cards. And the Climax combo, compared to other options in this set, uh, not quite what we're looking for. So uh, next we have this 2-1 rare. That's it. And uh, this is an event counter that allows you to give one of your characters uh, two effects until the end of the turn. So the first one, the character that's being attacked cannot be reversed. And your opponent also cannot deal burn damage during that battle. So. Um, this is a bit of a niche card. You're not always going to play against cards that have on, uh, that have burn at, as their finisher uh, or reverse. So not a card that sees a whole lot of play. Typically, players like to look for uh, non-interactive climax combos at level 3. So sometimes those non-interactive climax combos will mean not reversing. And that means that half of this card just doesn't work. Maybe they don't have a reverse combo or a burn combo at all as their finisher, which makes this card completely useless. And so that's a reason why this card does not see a whole lot of play. So here we have, in the next pack, we have the 1-0-I Climax combo. So this is one that interacts with uh, the level zero, uh, level 0 Kaguya that we pulled earlier. Uh, this gains extra power for each Kaguya you have on backstage. And she has a Climax combo with a book that allows you to believe it's on reverse search your deck for a shooting character so you can get a 6k power line if you have two kageas in the back row it's a bit of a specific deck though and so unfortunately not part of the meta setup the fact that she needs two kageas in the back row severely limits the choices that you have in the deck and so unfortunately that means that uh, as a deck archetype not so popular and um, very fun side profile if you want to try it though Next we have the uh, next rare is the Chica level 0. This is a very important card if you want to play a Chica based deck because she salvages the uh, Don Dayo event, the Love Tante, actually, Love Tante event. Uh, that's very integral to Chica combos. So uh, if you're running a Chica based deck, this is definitely a card that you want to have a lot of copies of so that you can repeatedly get the event back to your hand and play it over and over again. This next card we have is this level zero Chica. So she has uh, what I guess some players refer to as a Joe Runner ability. I personally refer to it as a coin flip bounce, where uh, at the start of the opponent's turn, 
uh, you reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's a level 1 or higher character, you can return this card to your hand. So it's an RNG way to get cards back. And unfortunately, due to the randomness of the profile, I'm not a huge fan of it. Although, some people do like to run this card. Uh, she also has an ability where on play, uh, you can discard a card and you can choose up to one copy of a Spartan training event in your waiting room, which I believe is the level swap one uh, that goes with the, uh, the Shirogane that we saw earlier. And you get to add it to your hand. So if you're running that deck, this is definitely a card that you're going to want to use. But as we said before, not the most popular deck profile and uh, not too many people run it. Now, speaking of popular deck profiles, we do have this next card here. It's definitely a card that is run in the most popular, uh, most considered optimized version of the deck. And she has a Climax combo with uh, this standby Climax. It's a very interesting card actually, because uh, the Climax combo itself isn't actually a plusing combo, unlike uh, other combos. Uh, the combo itself, on attack, she gets a marker from the top card, and that's actually all the combo does. However, uh, her secondary ability allows you, when you reverse an opponent's character, you can spend the marker in order to search your deck for a character and add it to your hand. So, uh, in a sense, that is the whole combo um, on the climax uh, effect. But an interesting part about this card is that when she attacks, you get the marker. Uh, even if your opponent doesn't have a character for you to reverse, um, even if she's when she still has the marker because she hasn't used it for the effect, if your opponent crashes into her at a later time, you can then use the marker and get the search off then. So here we have a 1-0 blue event, Incident of the Century. This is a card that players often compare to uh, the That Irritating Girl event from Bang Dream uh, because it has the ability to get back stock, I believe. Uh, yeah, at the end of the turn, okay, so the way this event works is you choose one of your characters, it gains 500 and gains two abilities. Uh, on attack, you can pay one, and if you do on that attack, you trigger twice. And at the end of the turn, you get to take a Shuqing character from your waiting room and put it into stock. So like Toilet, it allows you to uh, essentially use this to convert into one stock. But unlike the Toilet event, it does not have the potential to uh, replace this card as uh, Toilet has the top check at. However, this card is also an integral part of uh, the aforementioned deck with Kaguya and Hayasaka, as you do need to reveal this event in order to use this effect in order to search or salvage this eye from your deck or waiting room. On to the next pack, we do have a 2-1 eye climax combo. Another one that's not used very much, but definitely a very interesting one. It's a very powerful ability that you can use at level 2. Uh, the main issue with the card, I would say, is that because it's a level 2 Climax combo, uh, typically you want to have a Climax combo at level 1 and a Climax combo at uh, and a Climax combo at level 3. Um, having a Climax combo at level 2 sometimes feels like it's too late in order to use the combo, and uh, if you run it instead of a level 3 combo, then unfortunately like you're just lacking a finisher and also that was my mistake i forgot the level one i was actually double r so uh and then now moving on to the last pack we do have our last double r this is love detective chica a very very good card for the chica deck so we are pulling a lot of uh chica cards out of this particular booster box so um on play you can heal one so very good for getting your damage down to a manageable state uh, in addition to gaining 500 power for each of your other Shuqing characters, she has a very respectable 11k body when on a full board, and she has a very powerful finisher effect with this uh, gold bar climax. If I can pull it up, I believe it's this one. Yeah. So, uh, rebelling against society. So she has a climax combo with this climax, where when she reverses the battle opponent, you can pay 3, discard 2, and you can burn your opponent for X damage, where X is the number of copies of the Love Detective event, which unfortunately we didn't actually pull in this box, so hopefully we'll be able to pull out of this box so I can show that card to you guys. Uh, you can deal X damage to your opponent, where X is the number of uh, Love Detective in your waiting room, and you do it twice, so uh, very, 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 very high damage potential uh, with this card. So. 
Very, very good. Going into the second box, we did pull the K box topper again. And hopefully we can pull some of the other double R's so we can show those to you guys. So we pulled uh, these five, a lot of Chica. We didn't pull any Kaguya or Shirogane double R's. So hopefully we get to pull those in these next few packs. So we can show those to you guys. Speaking of Love Detective, here is the Love Detective event in the first pack of the second box. So in order to activate this, you need to have a Chica on stage, which if you're playing a Chica based deck, shouldn't be too much of a problem. You get to look at up to four cards from the top of your deck, choose up to one Shuchi and character from among them, reveal to your opponent, add it to hand, and send the rest to waiting room. And then you may also choose a cost zero character in your opponent's front row and return it back to their hand. So this is a very, very good card when comboed with uh, the level zero Chica that we saw in the first set, allowing you to very, very quickly mill through your deck and get out of uh, bad deck states, as well as filter for cards that you might need, and uh, fill the waiting room for, for salvage targets for your level one combo. And it's also the card that you need in your waiting room in order to use the Love Detective Chica level three finisher. So definitely all of these Chica cards working very, very well together. All right, here next we have for the rare for this pack, arguably the most important rare in this set, at least in my opinion. Uh, this is a level zero Hayasaka drop search. On play, you can pay one, discard a card, search your deck for a Shuchin character, and return it or er, and add it to your hand. Uh, but more importantly, she is a resonance target for a for numerous cards throughout this set. So resonance being a mechanic where you need to have a specific card in your hand, and then you reveal it in order to do effects. So um, this card is one that needs to be in your hand a lot, and the other effect allows you to do that very well. So after you play this card to use the drop search effect, uh, you can then use her second effect when you play a climax. So let's say, for example, a standby climax. This is a very common interaction in Kaguya where you would play a climax and you can use her second ability, return her to your hand, give one of your characters 2000 power until the end of the turn. So this accomplishes multiple things. Not only does it uh, return this card to your hand in order to use for your resonance abilities. It also clears up the space on the board for you to uh, play a character from waiting room with a standby. And it also gives you that 2k buff, which is very, very useful. Um, as we saw earlier with the level one Kaguya combo, this does uh, want to reverse in order to get the plus off of the combo and utilize that marker. And so bouncing back this Hayasaka to your hand lets you accomplish that very easily. So a very strong card. Uh, definitely one of the best rares in the set, in my opinion. So our first double R of this box, we did pull another copy of the Hayasaka level one combo. So we already talked about that before. So we can just move right along to the next pack. If I had to pick uh, three double R's out of this set that you definitely want to see the most, it would absolutely be these two right here. These two can go into any deck that you want to play for the set. Literally any deck that you want to play, you can run these two cards. So two of the most important cards in the set. Our next rare, we have this 3-2 Chica. So she is an assist. She gives 2k power to characters in front of her while she's in the back row. Uh, when you play an event once per turn, you can give a character 1500 power until the end of the turn. So again, useful with the Chica synergy since you will be playing events such as the Love Detective event very often in this deck. And also, when she's placed on stage from hand, you can discard one card to search your deck for an event and add it to your hand. So that can be very useful for grabbing specific events. Although, a lot of the time, you're going to see this card used as a potential standby target. So by using a standby effect, you can bring this card out at level 2 and have a 2k assist that can just buff your characters to really, really high levels. All right, the next rare, another very, very strong rare. Uh, if you're unable to get uh, copies of this K double R, I highly recommend looking into this rare as an alternative. So this is the uh, Trembling Kaguya. At the start of your opponent's attack phase, you can move this to any empty slot in your front row, and she's also a level zero bomb. So this is a very, very annoying card. Not only can she run back and forth to try to avoid getting reversed, when it's her turn to attack again, she can guarantee that your opponent's character gets reversed by using her bomb ability. So very, very strong card. If you're unable to get these, as I'm sure these will be 
quite pricey as they are definitely the one of the chase cards of the set. Definitely look into picking up copies of these as an alternative. This is going to be a very good budget option for Hoggy decks. Okay, moving on to the next pack. We do have this 3-2 Climax combo, again, for the Chica. Typically, for the Chica deck, you will not be running this combo, and instead you're going to be running uh, four Choice Climax for the level one, and four Gold Bar for the Chica. And we will have a deck profile if we don't already have it up, we will have a deck profile for Chica Waifu on this channel that you guys can check out, so be sure to stay tuned for that if it's not already out on the channel. All right, these boxes are looking really good. We pulled a second copy of the K-Runner, so if you can get two boxes like these, these are definitely what you're looking for. Definitely great cards that you can run in any and every Kaguya deck. Unfortunately, some of the other ones, not so much. These are more niche cards, but then again, that, that tends to be the case with uh, Climax Combos, which all these ones are, whereas these ones are level zero cards. So, splashable in pretty much everything. On well, the next pack, we do have a Double R Kaguya. So this is the first Double R Kaguya that we have pulled. Uh, this is a level zero card. It has two abilities. Both are very useful. So uh, the first one is on play from stage from, uh, one place on stage from hand. You can pay three stock and send all of your opponent's stock to waiting room and replace it with an equal number of cards from the top of their deck. So this is what's commonly referred to in the community as a stock swap. And uh, it's kind of a tricky effect to use. You want to use it when your opponent has a lot of clean stock and they have a deck that has a lot of climaxes so that you can use this effect to take all the clean stock, send it to waiting room, and then replace it with a bunch of climaxes. And this can definitely screw up their uh, their game plan. Her other effect, on attack, you can pay one stock in order to trigger twice on that attack, which commonly referred to as a twin drive. And uh, this can be useful for paying out climaxes on the fly. So uh, if you attack with her, like say second or third, and uh, one of your earlier attacks triggered a climax, you can use this effect to pay it out and make sure that your stock is as clean as possible. So we pulled another copy of the coin flip Chica. And going on to the next pack, still have three double R, uh, sorry, we still have uh, two double R's to go. There is a couple double R's that we have not pulled yet that hopefully we can get in these. We got another copy of the 1-1 one, one support. So uh, this is one of the cards that, I know I know we pulled this card before, but this is one of the cards that uh, interacts with the level zero Hayasaka that we saw earlier. So uh, apart from having a level assist effect, or actually, did we pull this earlier? I'm not actually sure if we did. Yeah, we did, we pulled it near the start. Okay, so um, the way this card its effect works, uh, the resonate ability, is you can pay one and rest this and reveal the level zero high socket in your hand and look at up to three cards from the top of your deck, choose a shooting character from among them, add it to hand and send the rest to waiting room. So uh, in the main build, this is typically brought out at level one in order to serve as not only an assist, but also a way to mill through the deck and maintain card advantage by using the resonance. And it's actually very interesting that uh, the main build tends to use this card for advantage instead of uh, a standard deck using a Brainstorm profile. And the reason for this is because the main build is centered around standbying out cards at level one. So you want you can standby out big 2-2s, two for example, the 2-2 uh, two -two Ishigami, which we saw earlier. Uh, by bringing out these big level 2s at level one, you can plus by keeping cards on the board instead of having to uh, replace cards that are reversed at level one like standard other decks and uh, you don't need the brainstorm as much and you can instead just use this to uh, maintain advantage that way and it also uh, the level assist synergizes well with these level two cards that you're bringing out early because you get bigger assists on cards that are higher levels so next we have uh next pack we have the three two kaguya Climax combo, which we've seen previously. Still looking for our foil as well, so we can get a nice foil. We have a 2k counter for Kaguya. Just a very simple card. 
2k counter, you can use it to uh, defend some of your beefier boards at level 1. Or use it to defend your standby targets or cards that you have uh, early played that you want to keep on the board. Uh, typically though, it's actually not a common card to run the 1-0 as much as uh, one of the other counters that we I don't think we've even pulled yet, which is a level 2 counter. So hopefully we can get that, we can talk about that as well. Our next rare is a 2-2 Chica. This is a very interesting card. It, is, it can double as a standby target as well as a card that can force both players to free fresh. Um, because this card, when you have two or more other Shuqing characters, she goes up to 10k power, making her a pretty reasonable standby target. Uh, her disadvantage against the Ishigami that we showed earlier is that Ishigami gains Encore, whereas uh, the Chica does not. Uh, but the Chica has a very interesting on-play effect where you can discard a card in order to force both players to refresh. The problem is that because you have to play it from your hand, you do have to pay the two stock, and that is not something that a lot of players are very keen on, so this is a card that doesn't see much play compared to the other available standby targets. Our next double R, we did pull another copy of the 3-2 Chica. So we're looking at one more double R and a foil. So hopefully we can pull one of the double R's that we haven't pulled yet since there are actually four double R's that we haven't pulled since we've gotten three multiples. All right, we have our foil. So this is the SR version of the 1-0 Kaguya combo. Let me just get the sleeve turned. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Hopefully the camera will focus on that. And uh, so yeah, this is a foil version of the level one Kaguya combo that we showed earlier. This one right here. Quite a difference in art. And uh, yeah, very, very nice. Has that promotional art on it, as opposed to the regular one. It's just a screenshot. Okay. Now we're getting into the home stretch. We could pull a second foil out of this box still, and we still have one double R to go. And hopefully we can pull that nice 3-2 Kaguya. This would round out that box very nicely. So we do have the 2-1 Hayasaka combo. into the home stretch with a another copy of the 3-1 Love is War event. I actually think it's called something different in Romantic Battle of the Brain. Oh, actually, hold on. I just realized I made a mistake. Or I think one of the earlier cards that I was referring to actually salvages this instead of the trial deck event. So in which case, that's my mistake. Oh, okay, they have the same name. Ha <laughs> ha! Joke's on me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I wasn't crazy, I knew it. All right. Um, our last double R of the box, we do have the 1-0 Chica. So unfortunately, we did pull four dupes for the double R's out of these two boxes. Uh, still a chance for one last foil, in which case that would be pretty sick. Maybe we'll get a triple R or even a sign card. I'm actually not sure if you can pull a sign card with an SR. We do have another copy of the uh, 3-2-K early play. And on to the last pack. Can we get something good from this one? You know, it'll open. All right, and nope, just a regular rare, but it is one that we did not pull yet that I did want to talk about, which is the 2-1 free refresh counter. So uh, as I was saying earlier, we do have the option of running this 1-0 counter. Although uh, in the main build, the level one boards aren't super defensible. For example, cards such as the uh, level one combo, which we have talked about previously. And a lot of players tend to run multiple copies of this free fresh backup, which uh, uh, it's a pay one backup that allows you to pay an extra two if you want to free refresh your deck. Uh, this is a, definitely a very good card that you want to look into running, especially if you play either Gate Climaxes or uh, Choice Climaxes. 
Uh, the reason for this is because um, when you trigger either one of these, you can salvage this from your waiting room. And then if you trigger even more climaxes, this gives you a get out of jail free button, essentially, allowing you to pay the climaxes out and free refresh your deck and get back into a state where you're not in danger and you're not out a lot of climaxes. So let's do a quick recap on the double R's that we pulled. So as far as yellows, we pulled two copies of the Chica level one combo and one copy of the Chica level zero. Uh, for greens, we pulled two copy of the K level zero, definitely a card you wanna be looking for as many copies as you can get and uh, two copies of the Chica level three. A bit of a specialized card. You do want to be running this in a very Chica-centric deck. So uh, unfortunately, not one of the best pulls for the double R slot. Uh, for red, or actually, real quick before we go into red, we should talk about uh, one of the double R's that was not pulled, which was a 3-2 Shirogane early play. Um, so that card is a card that can be placed on stage at level two if you have two or less climaxes in your waiting room. And he gains a bunch of power and the ability that the opponent cannot uh, play backups against his attack, but he also cannot, uh, you, you cannot use backups in his attack uh, when he's attacked until the end of the opponent's next turn. And he has a clock shooter ability. So it's a very good card that allows you to play him early. He gets huge and then you can use his clock kick ability as either a finisher in the conventional sense, or you can use it to uh, eliminate your opponent's early plays and uh, make sure that they can't come back because when you clock kick the card, your opponent cannot on court back. So definitely a very versatile card, very powerful card, and also one that was actually very underrated uh, when the set first came out in uh, JP. So definitely be, up, be on the lookout for that. Uh, for red, we pulled one copy of the Twin Drive and Stock Swap Kaguya. Unfortunately, we were unable to pull the 3-2 Kaguya, which is a very, very strong card. Uh, healer and a Climax combo with uh, this Gate Climax serves as both a healer and finisher in this deck, and is also another one of the cards that uh, is involved in the Resonance package with the level zero Hayasaka. So it's unfortunate that we are not able to pull that. That's definitely one of the most uh, interesting cards in the set. And then uh, for blue, we have this one zero I. Uh, climax combo, as we covered earlier, not a card that you typically see in the more popular builds uh, due to the restrictions that you have to run a lot of Kaguya cards uh, along, alongside this, and just not cards that you typically see in the uh, normal decks. So another blue card that we did, were not able to pull was the 0-0 Kaguya Brainstorm. Uh, although, as I mentioned earlier, this is actually in the, in the meta deck. This is a deck where you uh, a lot of times are using this as your back row engine in order to gain advantage, although the Brainstorm is definitely a card that you can make use of in order to uh, in order to get some advantage if you're not running this package. So um, I believe that's... I could have sworn there's... There's got to be one more double R we didn't pull, right? What's the last double R? One, two... Oh yes, that's right. Okay, and then the last early play, or the last level, the last double R that we did not pull is another Hayasaka card, which is a three-two blue. You can play it if you have four Shuchin characters on stage already, and then she comes into play and heals one. And if you have uh, three or more other Shuchin characters, she also gains fifteen hundred power, making her a solid ten k power, and also. The opposing character cannot, uh, the opposing player cannot use events during her battle. So, uh, very good early play. You do have some very strong early play options to look at in a set between the 3 2K, the 3 2 High Soccer early play, as well as the 3 2 Shirogane. So, feel free to mix and match and try what you think works best. Because uh, between those three level, uh, between those three level three early plays, um, pretty much any of them can work, any combination. So, feel free to. Try around with those and experiment, uh, especially depending on what you pull, uh, as um, two of them are double R's and one of them is a rare. So a couple of them may be a little bit difficult to pull, but uh, you'll always have the 3-2-K to fall back on. So this concludes our box opening for Kaguya-sama Love is War. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something, of course. And uh, yeah, hopefully we will see you guys back for more of our future content, future box openings, as well as some of the deck profiles that we will be uploading on this channel, as well as some uh, gameplay that you guys can look forward to running some of these cards that we've talked about here today. So 
yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, this has been She's the Cats on behalf of Tressa's Collectibles. And be sure to hit the subscribe button and follow us on our social media. We have an Instagram account as well as the main Facebook page. So be sure to check those out. And until next time, see ya.